And now for the Monero development segment. Hey, hey what's up? How are you? I'm doing good. I'm, I'm just sorry, uh, fanboying because you have Arctic Mine here, and I, and and I'm just like out of nowhere. I'm like Arctic Mine shows. I'm like Jesus. Doug's a heavy hitter. <laughs> But yeah, uh, <laughs> you're you're a heavy hitter, man. No. <laughs> uh, as always, I, I thank you for doing these. These have been awesome, a great addition to the show. Yeah, yeah. no, it's just um, I remember when you talked called me about Anon Shop, and I was like, Doug, because I had like literally binged like all your stuff. I'm like, Doug wants to talk to me. I'm like, Jesus, what what, what what's going on here? But yeah, no, thanks for having me on. It's really great stuff. <laughs> great. What do you what do you got for us this week? Um, I know. Yeah, um, I know um, um, Tuxedo asked me to talk about the Monero subscription service, but I forgot about that, but that's coming soon. Sorry, Tuxedo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but this week I'm going to be talking about Tevador, I guess, um, saves Tor from DOS. In theory, right, I know I'm being a bit um, dramatic. I, I don't think the code is in practice yet, but a lot of people are supporting it and is in the dev work right now. So I'm going to talk about that because, you know, we're talking about dark neck markets. I know Body hinted at it. Thanks for the lead up, Body. Um, Body. And so I want to get talk a little bit about that. I'll keep it quick. I know you got a lot of guests on today. I'm super excited for the conversation. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, basically. Hopefully, to, hopefully you could stick around too, uh, interact yeah. with uh, the guests. But go ahead. Take it away. Yeah, yeah, so, this, this is big news. Yeah, basically, um, if you're not familiar with the uh, what's been going on with Tor, it was basically on their DDoS attack. I know Doug is also familiar with how nasty those can be, given their experience in Monerotopia. So basically, if someone was flooding the network with um, requests, and it makes it super, super slow. So which is a big issue, because I know Body was getting at maybe someone is buying insulin on the dark tank market and using Monero. So you like these are like actually life-saving sites and marketplaces that people need. So it's a big, big issue if you can't use them. And basically, Tevador is someone... I need to give you a little more context if you don't know what Random X is. It's, Probably my, I don't know. Probably my my when I compare my favorite features about Monero is 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 a close tie between Random X and Dynamic Block Scaling. So Random X basically was added to Monero in 2019, and it was designed to stop um, to stop ASICs and whatnot, and stop spam on the network essentially. So basically, what an ASIC is is in Bitcoin. ASICs are what do the proof of work, essentially. And that's not great for a uh, cryptocurrency because it centralizes all the work, right? In order to be a Bitcoin miner, you need like a big factory. You need to go get contracts with the power regulators, all that stuff, which makes you a great target to be regulated, as we've seen in the United States, et cetera, et cetera. And this is actually hinted at in the um, by Satoshi, I believe, on a forum post. One CPU, one vote. And it basically helps decentralize the network. And it was worked on by Howard Chu, Need More Money, and Tevador. So this just sets you up to what Random X is and why it's relevant in this context. Am I going too fast? Any questions? No, this is good. This is a good uh, awesome. reminder. Yeah. So basically, Random X is amazing. I have a thread, shameless plug in the right, talking about why it's important and why I think every cryptocurrency should have a version of its own Random X. But like I said, Tevador did a bunch of work with his team on Random X, and that leads into how Tor is using it. Basically, Tor is under attack right now by various peoples, um, and it's being DDoS. So it's really slow, really hard to use, and actually a lot of services have gone down. I believe like Dread Marketplace, which is a great place for people to learn about different issues. Um, like I, I believe it's um, a lot of word. The word they use is like um, um, harm prevention in the space. So you can study more about that. But Dread is a great service, been around for years, and it was actually taken down. And basically, a DDoS attack is when someone just sends a lot of traffic. To your website and it takes it and it pretty much makes it overloads the services makes uh, makes it so that authentic people can't actually use the service i know doug actually has experiences um Monerotopia was ddos for like a couple days i believe yeah yeah definitely definitely was because the yeah amount of hits we got like you know went to the tens of thousands or whatever and just completely knocked out the site yeah days. and i believe you you got in contact with the devs and they fixed it like within like yeah a, we ended up adding yeah. cloudfare Mm. Um, and you know that that solved the problem once we you know properly did that yeah but um, unfortunately with um tor you can't use something like um cloud cloud flare to protect tor because the tor is supposed to be anonymous and a big issue when fighting um, ddos attacks on tor 
is it's twofold. The first one is you can't do a lot of the normal things because it's supposed to be anonymous, right? So I can't just be like, I'll blacklist your IP and say your IP sent like 10,000 requests to the website. I'm going to block your IP because you don't actually know where the request came, came from. Because mm-hmm. that's the entire point of Tor. And the second biggest issue is that Tor networking runs your um, request through a bunch of different computers. So you're actually, you can use that to, you can send one request and take up like three times as much resources. And that's not the exact number, of course, but that's just a great analogy uh, you can use. So it's very, very resource intensive because it, because of onion routing, which makes it like super, super, super hard to defend against DDoS attacks. I think this has been going off around a year at this point. You know, some of the best devs have been working on it and they haven't been able to fix it until now. And- do, we, do we have any theories as to who's performing the DDoS attacks? Or I guess it would just be that or just be complete, uh, you know, unsubstantiated theories. Nobody, nobody yeah. knows. Um, in my reading, I've heard uh, some theories. There's two main theories, depending on what kind of hat you want to wear. You want to wear your tin for a hat. It is the um, CIA or some other big government trying to stop people from doing things on the dark net, stop the traffic, which I don't know if I really buy that because I mean, it was made by, I'm sure the CIA uses Tor, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm not sure I buy that the state actor approach. But I know that um, Dread, this is actually not a theory, this is a, this is a fact, I guess. Dread um, was a forum that's on the dark net, and they were being um, actually DDoS, and they were being, um, what's it called? Sorry, oh, my mind. When someone demands money from you, hell, not hell, hostage, extorted. Right. Extorted, yep. Yeah, so you're basically saying, hey, we're going to DDoS your website, take you down unless you send us, you know, 50 Monero, 100 Monero. Mm-hmm. And Dread's like, I mean, of course, you, you, you never pay terrorists because they just keep terrorizing you. So he, he's been working on um, his own stuff. I think Hug Bunter is a guy behind um, Dread. You want to study that more. So I think it's basically probably, in my opinion, more likely someone's DDoSing different marketplaces and then holding them hostage, basically saying, pay us money or we, or we DDoS you. Mm. That's my theory, right? So that, That's a pretty good one. I like that one. Yeah. So it's, it was not mine. I, it's the one I read online that, that yeah. makes the most sense to me. <laughs> but okay. yeah, basically, so basically what Tor needed was a proof of work algorithm. So right now, in order to um, send a connection on the network, you don't really need to pay anything, do anything. You you need a computer, and that gets amplified. But right now, if you throw a proof of work algorithm on it, right, you have to actually do work to send a send a connection now. So that makes it much more expensive for an attacker to um, DDoS the network because instead of just having a bunch of computers, you have to do a bunch of um, essentially what you will be mining in the web browser. Essentially, like very high level, they have to mine some. Do some um, do some mining in the browser using Tevedora's algorithm, and then it lets them through. Which it shouldn't be too hard for someone actually using Tor if you're using it on your computer. But if you're like someone trying to use a computer to, to send ten thousand, twenty thousand um, connections, it it you know gets very, very, very costly, and it um cut that helps cuts down on traffic essentially. So that's the setup to what Tor needed, and Tor actually reached out to Tevedora. And ask them, they're like, hey, we've seen the work that you've done with Random X, really cool stuff. Could you make something like that, but for Tor? And then basically after that, Tor um Tevador stepped in and does a review who Tevador is. Tevador worked on Random X. So once again, I, I want to keep making these connections. I want I don't think people realize I think the the core devs are too humble, honestly, right? Because I feel like because we have Arctic, we have Arctic Mine here, we have all these people, they're very approachable which I think sort of makes um, people think that these people aren't like these people are like the LeBron of the crypto space, which is like, it's just crazy to say that. Like if you read their stuff, like, I mean, top of the game, like you're to the point where you're so good at development that Tor reaches out to you personally to help them build a proof of work algorithm, which like crazy. I mean, these people are really good at what they do. So basically Tevador and, and, and other people worked on random X um, Tor reached out to Tevador specifically to make a different algorithm. So Tevador basically started by working, improving Random X, and he had, he had to deal with two major issues. The first issue was that unlike Random X is not meant for, um, Random X is meant for a browser, so it can't be too computationally heavy, right? You can't be, um, verifications can't take forever. It needs to be pretty quick because you're running it in a browser. It might be on a phone even, so you can't be as heavy as Random X is. And also another issue was that, um, sorry, Oof. I was I'm, I'm speaking faster than I'm thinking, but another issue is that it's in a browser, so it can't be as fast. And there's another issue. I'll come with it later. I forgot it right now. 
But basically, Terador took the design from Random X and changed it and added it to very interesting to um, Zcash's old proof of work algorithm, which I, I forgot the name of it, but I think it was um, Equa Equ Hash. Yeah. So it's basically, um, I know Zcash is a bad word here, but Zcash tried to be ASIC resistant a couple years ago and it actually failed, which is another issue on that why it failed, what's going on with that. But Trevor, Teverdor actually went and studied Random X and took some parts from Equa Hash and created Equal X. And it, it is made to be in a browser. And it is made to be have five, fast verification times and not be as heavy. But one thing about it is that it's not ASIC resistant as random exits because it doesn't necessarily need it. Because in order to make uh, an ASIC for this this algorithm, would take like I think Tevador said like twenty eight million dollars. And then and, and when they, once they yeah it was it was a lot of money. And then if once they do make an ASIC, you can just fork the algorithm very easily much easier than you can with a network, right? Because with Tor, in order to fork it, you just release a new update. And it takes, like, you know, every everyone's running it, it's a new update. But when, when you're doing something like random, like um, Monero, you need to have, you can't go updating your algorithm every month, every week. It just, they, they've had updates. I think back in the day, I think updates came out every six months or like maybe every eight months for it. And it was a big pain because people have to update their wallets, people have to update their servers. It's, Basically, trying to, trying to update backend code is much harder than just updating a Tor browser, essentially. So it's not ASIC resistant, but it is optimized running a browser, which means it's not as heavy um, computationally wise, and it's not as heavy when it comes to verification time. And I think that's... Sorry, I'm speaking really fast. It's really cool stuff, trying to condense it down here. Any questions? I'm, I went really fast. <laughs> no, no worries, man. Um, Tux, you got any questions? That is super cool. I'm glad that Tor's finally moving in this direction because like mm -hmm. i know people have been talking about this kind of thing for years because the first i i believe the the first instance of a proof of work was uh it was hash mail i think is what it was called. yes yes yeah where you had to do or you had to do a little bit of work or like you had to pay mm -hmm. or something uh in order to send an email unfortunately that didn't take off um or else it could have been really good for email spam so i'm glad to see this being yeah. used in other things not just cryptos because it can be super helpful for like you talked about ddos prevention super cool yeah no these the cryptographers behind it are, are just and it's really interesting to see those old ideas i think that was like what like 2009 no 2007 that i did i, I first came across not first came across but i believe it's from that time it's really interesting to see all these old ideas especially the old bitcoin like og ideas like how finney working on stuff like that and how it's good to see people like Monero Space take those ideas and actually commit to them, where other places I feel like have like you know left them alone because they're too hard because it, it you know doesn't make the number go up type stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, beautiful. I mean, big picture, not completely related, but like mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people were like, not a, actually, most people weren't, but some people were down and out, right, with the with the news in Europe, the delistings, uh, yeah, the, uh, Binance, and just this overall. Mm -hmm temperament of europe is cracking down on monero but at the same time you have news like this right and this is the yeah. real news that matters that the cypherpunks are continuing to forge ahead not directly related right but it does mm -hmm. it does help the ecosystem overall right by strengthening tor it's gonna strengthen uh our ability to always have access to marketplaces and monero and help have access anonymous access to monero itself so uh, you know, it looks like we're, we're losing over there on that end, but mm -hmm. we're really winning on the, you know, on the cypherpunk end where we continue to constantly see development and breakthroughs. So that, that that's the way I view it. Yeah, no, that's a great view. They, the Monero team and crypto space as a whole has been putting out some great work. I know we're in a bear market, right? Bear-ish market. Monero is like basically a stable coin these days, but it's really nice to see people building and just putting out constantly just hit. Like hit after hit, honestly. Like as a fan, is is great to see this kind of stuff. And yep. yeah, and anyone that wants to go into more into it, I think. Sorry, I, I keep just like <laughs> praising the Cordells, but the way the Cordells explain very um, technical topics is amazing. I think that um, we saw this with actually going back. This mm -hmm. is actually from Doug's. Um, once again, if it happened in Monero space, Doug probably has a, a talk about it. Like I'm not joking. Like he had Tevador on, yeah. Yeah, he had Tevador need money and um, mm -hmm. so Howard Chu come Howard. on and actually talk about it. It was a great talk. One of my favorite talks you've done, and they're very eloquent at explaining it to someone who's like to me who isn't a cryptographer, 
what's going on. So I think Trevor Noah's write-up also exemplifies that type of domain expertise and ability to educate and explain to people what's going on in the space, which is very important because we shouldn't just blindly trust the Cordios, right? They should be able to explain and make sense what's going on to us. And Trevor Noah did a great explanation here. So you can pause the video or, you know, write this down, Google it. It's on the GitHub. It's a great explanation if you want more details. Awesome, yeah, man. Good job. Great job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's, let's, we'll, we'll keep it moving. D Goon, stick mm -hmm. around if you can. Yep, I'll uh, be here. You can join in on the, the guest segment. Tux. Always good as usual. Thanks, D Goon. Yeah, yes. Thank you. thank you so much, man.